And welcome back. Canada squares off with China again. This week, in a, lit a little tit for tat move, China expelled a Canadian diplomat following Canada's expulsion of a Chinese diplomat. But in Canada's delicate dance with China, is the government taking the right tactic? And how will that play out at, ne at next week's rather G7 summit? Let's take this to our panel of strategists. Greg McCochran has advised politicians at all three levels of government and worked on the communications team for two national election campaigns. He leans liberal. Fred Delore is the former director of political operations for Prime Minister Stephen Harper and was the 2021 Conservative National Campaign Manager. He is now a managing partner with Delore Public Affairs. And Anne McGrath is national director of the NDP. Hello, welcome to the three of you. No, always nice to have you on a Friday. I know we've talked about Chinese interference a lot. It has overtaken inflation in the headlines, at least in the media. And what I want to talk to the strategist about is why is this lingering and why don't we still know who knew what, when two MPs may have been the target now of Chinese interference. Greg, I want to start with you. Is the drip a drip of information telling us the only way out of this is a public inquiry? Yes, I, I think so. I mean, my only questions around a public inquiry have been around people's expectations. You know, we're not going to get the Relo Commission. We're not going to have the same timelines. We're not probably going to have the same type of transparency because it's top secret. But I think that's where uh, we, we need to go. Um, and I think, you know, perhaps, you know, hindsight being 2020, um, you know, the Liberals may have wanted to get there uh, or may have, have called it themselves. But I think they also want to have some sort of um, arm's length approach to this so that they could say, look, you know, an, an eminent Canadian uh, has, has pointed this way. Um, what's, what's interesting, Anne and I were in an in-person panel this, this week um, for an industry association with a Conservative, and the Conservatives said this issue is not resonating with average Canadians, that, that people are, are, are actually concerned about what you mentioned, Joyce, inflation. So it, it is interesting that this still bubbles up, yet this week we ended up talking about things like your previous panels discussed, things like passports. And uh, we don't want to get into the passports and the squirrels in the passport, but, um, you know, I, I, I discovered from that story that there are actually images in the passport, and I used my passport several times Same this week, here. and I never knew that. Okay, I didn't either, but squirrels? Okay, let me, don't get me going the squirrels, but, you know, coming back to, uh, oh, passport is such a good topic, but coming are, back to... We are to, deep into silly season. I know, that is silly season, yeah. because passports has been talked about more than inflation, yeah. and Chinese interference yeah. this week. So yeah, I guess that is silly season. But I'm wondering about CSIS. I mean, this story, this Chinese interference story goes back before the Liberals were in the government. So was it a known fact? Was, was, was CSIS trying to, 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 to scream in the desert that this is happening and nobody's listening? Well, that's a good question because I, I don't think we, we, we will know that because uh, the only things that we... What happens is that there, there, a story comes out in the media and then we find out that there was something there. We've never actually heard anything from a government proactively about any of these kinds of things. I personally believe that the drumbeat for a public inquiry is going to be impossible to, to, to resist. I think it's going to have to happen. The special rapporteur, uh, David Johnson, uh, delivers his interim report uh, next week, I think it is, or the, at the end of next week or beginning of the, the next week. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I will be shocked if he does not recommend a public inquiry. I, I think that you're right, though, that there is... Uh, probably a bit of a difference between the headlines and what people care about. Um, and, and I think that there has been polling that has shown that, that what people care about still is the cost of their groceries, the cost of their housing. And they know this is happening and it raises questions in their mind, but it is not a preoccupation in the same way as it is here in the bubble and with the media. But Fred, the Conservatives are really going after this story. Like, so is it helping them in the polls? Is this why they're doing it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that th there's also a lot of concern on the part of the Conservatives, but this is political strategy. Let's not kid each other. So is this helping them? Because I think Anne is right. People listen to this, but they still have to go buy their groceries. They're yeah. still wondering about the rent and, and you know, sort of day-to-day -day stuff. So. 
Yeah, I think people zone out quickly on this issue. It's hot, it bubbles up, and it's a big issue for a couple of days, and then it disappears again. So for the Conservatives to keep going hard on it, it, it is a strategic mistake, I think, in some regards, where inflation and those issues are the ones that are going to, that are going to stick with people and what affects them. If I was advising the Conservative campaign, if I was talking to these folks, I'd be pushing hard on making sure the next campaign is protected and that we're secure. And that's where my, uh, my fear is that we're not doing that. Uh, so, okay, let's, let's go with something a little bit lighter than that. Let's talk about Maxime Bernier. So, we <laughs> That's all. <not> light. <laughs> <laughs> it is ish. Uh, but, uh, Greg, so he's, he's going to run uh, in Manitoba in um, Candice Bergen's seat. She resigned. She was a former leader of the, uh, the interim leader of the Conservative Party. So, he's coming back. Is he a threat to the Conservatives? This will be the test, and I'm really interested mm. to see what Fred's going to say on this because I know he, he, I believe he wrote on this <laughs> this week. Um, I, it's, you know, you said it's a lighter topic. Um, what I find a bit darker is looking at the comments that Max Bernier has made about this by-election and going in and where he sees the Conservative Party and, and that they don't exist anymore. He called someone a fake Conservative. I, I, the candidate that's uh, nominated there is a fake Conservative. And it's funny, you know, uh, David Johnson's now a Liberal and the Conservative candidate's not really a Conservative. You need a scorecard to follow along here. Uh, you know, if you look at Max Bernier's comments, they're very dark. He talks about how evil Canada is becoming and he talks about uh, things like decency and, you know, I think people in Ottawa for a long time graded Max on the curve, found him kind of amusing. Mad Max was his nickname. Um, but I think, you know, we have to remember this person almost became leader of the Conservative Party. Um, but yeah. this is this this is the test. And a minister. Uh, he was a minister. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it to Fred. You know, I know it's just show Joyce, but I think he had, yeah. he might have some interesting <laughs> comments on this from what I've read this week. Yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> um, Fred. A threat to the party? Look, but he's right. It is a test. Greg is right. This may be the test. It's right? an opportunity. It's an opportunity for Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives to finally, I believe, vanquish Max Bernier and the People's Party. This is a, uh, a, a party that grew up, came from the, the far right of the Conservative Party. They carved off a piece. Uh, they have it, and it's you know it continues to eat vote from us. It, it cost us seats. It cost us seats in the last election and the election before that. So I believe this is an opportunity for, for Polyev and the Conservatives to vanquish him, to crush him in this election. He's putting his own name on the ballot. At the same time, though, if Bernier gets over 20% of the vote, it shows us that the PPC is not going it's away, not, yeah, and they're going to keep there. eating at the Conservative vote, and yeah. it's a problem in that Polyev, who's the populist, hasn't yeah. vanquished him after all. Interesting. Last word. I think that this was going to be a test by election for the, the kind of, le of, of Mr. Poiliev's leadership. They, they nominated someone who's a populist, who is very in line with the kinds of things that Mr. Poiliev is saying. So it was going to be a test and I think that this throws a real curveball into it because, uh, because if they go down that road, um, uh, they, they can't go far enough down that road to meet the, uh, the, the, the challenge from Maxime Bernier. So I think that that, that by-election, which I think should have been an opportunity for them to test drive their messages for the next campaign, is now a big problem for them.